It is the <laughs> 1st of August. That means there's only four months left, and then this year will be over. That went so fast. Like, super fast. Yeah, September, August, September, October, November, December. Well, five months. Okay, five months. Yeah, but you count all of this for yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, wow. Fast year. Anyway, welcome, everybody. On Sundays, I usually just encourage sitting down, sewing, and let's chat and hang out. Uh, I am still working on my scraps not still actually i pause and then come back and pause and then come back to working on my scrap project um adding more to it and so on and so forth enjoying what i'm doing and having fun because that's what it's all about right when it comes to quilting so i'm just working on a scrap project and I'm cutting more pieces because now I have decided to make um, flying geese units like this mm -hmm. to go with um, all the stuff that I'm making. <laughs> that way I could have flying geese units. So I'm making them three and a half inches by um, two inches and then um, Three and a half inches by two inches and then i'm adding two inch squares to the end to make my flying geese units as well as i am uh saving all the little tiny pieces from the flying geese to make these because all the little leftover one inch pieces are in this oops, in this little bag and i'm going to use all that in another little tiny project because well i can and it's fun, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So, let's see who's here, Mr. Scotty. And if you are new to my channel and don't know, the man in the background is my husband, Scott. <laughs> he reads the comments. Let me go to the top. There we go. All right, we have Darlene is here, Kim, Linda, Katrina, uh, Angela, Alicia. I'm scrolling. Kind of same names over when you guys were talking to yourselves here. Linda, Vivian, My Quilt Projects, Emily, um, Debbie. Um, still scrolling. Susan is here. Darlene is here. Patricia, Jill, uh, Stephanie, Zella. Melina, Joe, Bernie, Vicki, Judy, Beverly, Ray, um, Terry, Susan, Jim, Shirley, Shelly. Hi, everybody. Welcome. So I'm going to pass this back to Scott. And like I said, I'm cutting three and a half inch rectangle, three and a half inch by two inch rectangles. And the reason for that is because every two inch square put together is three and a half inches. So when it's um, put together, so I'm making, and I'm totally forgetting what I'm doing while I'm doing it. <laughs> I got blue, dark blue and green so far. So now I need to find my Pink color. I made some earlier and then realized, what am I doing? I need uh, four of everything, not two. <laughs> so I'm making sure that I have two of each color for this. One, two, three and a half. Oh, those are exactly three and a half by two. So I'm making sure that I have four of each because I'm going to create stars but differently so there's that color and the other two are on the ironing board because they were sort of cut but not <laughs> they were just leftover pieces from other cuts and i'm trying to utilize all the fabric that's here in some way or another without too much waste which makes it work. So I'm just making these flying geese so that I can make a different style star. So there's the orange. I know I need the 
surface one, which is this one. Am I supposed to be ironing those pieces a while? Um, yeah, if you could, please. Oh, I didn't know you were ready. My ironing's not in it. It won't stand my way. He likes squeak. This thing's big, giant, heavy, and it bends the ironing board. Once I get this one cut, then I'm going to grab some white so that I can cut out my one, two, three and a half. Um, so I can cut out my two inch squares. And see all these leftovers, even though they're not two inch squares, I can turn them into one and a half inch squares. So I just throw them aside because I can use all that. So there is all of my colors. So now I need to cut. Twenty-four white squares that are two inches by two inches. So now, just stick these up here and cut. I'm just gonna cut this in in it as a. No, I'm not, because then I got to draw on the back, and I don't know which side is right side from wrong side when I do that. I'll just cut from one side. <laughs> you tell them all that you clean the other eye Oh, today I decided to clean my iron that got um the uh, glue on it. Okay. So look. It's nice and clean. There's no glue. And it all thanks to you guys by telling me to use a dryer sheet. Because the dryer sheet took it right off. But it had to be hot. The iron had to be hot to use the dryer sheet. Because it didn't work with it cold. Alright, so I'm going to cut some two inch strips off of here. And I said, well, I need 24. I don't even know how I'm going to get. It's okay if I have extra two. I'm just cutting two inch strips off of here, and I'm gonna cut, 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 cut. I cannot say cut. <laughs> I'm gonna cut a few. <laughs> Maybe I was trying to say cut and quilt at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. If I sound weird, it's just because I have a mint in my mouth. My dinner made my mouth taste like mushrooms, and I don't like mushrooms, so I'm. Sucking on a mint so that my mouth does not taste like mushrooms. Was there even mushrooms in that? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know if it did that. No, it's fine. It tasted okay. It's I just said it's just too much mushroom taste. All right, I think I'm gonna stop right here because that should definitely be able to cut me 24 squares. I'm just gonna place that to the side. I'm going to turn all these and stack them and then swap out to the smaller ruler. Hope everybody's doing well today. I've been sewing a little bit today and trimming and sewing and well, I've been hanging out in here a little bit today. Not a lot, just a little. I am doing um, Eric's sew along with Treasure Heart Creations. So. I did my two blocks for that because I'm doing two of every block that he does to make two projects with. So this was this week's block. There's two of them. And this would be cool if you wanted to just make this block over and over a bazillion times and then hook them together like this. That is a cool block. That would be cool. Or just hook them together like this over and over and just have X's throughout a whole entire quilt and do a, you can even do it scrappy with five inch squares because five inch squares is what made this in the first place. So that's what I did today. All right, I'm gonna take a nice straight edge cut, turn it around and cut two inch. <coughs> Bless me. <coughs> Thank me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, just didn't give me a chance. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to cut two inch squares. And then I'm going to draw on the back of all two inch squares. So this is five. I stacked five here. Ten. 
15 and that did not cut right there and here's 20 and this is 25 but we don't need that we're just going to take one off the top and call this my stack right here that i need to draw on the back of and i cut one more which leaves me with six Look at that. 20. I'm done with these in my anymore. That's Not right at the moment. All right, so now I'm going to draw a diagonal line across the back of all of these. I really don't have to if I use the line on my... Actually, that's what I'm just going to do because I don't really want to draw all those. Hmm? Can I turn the mirror off? No, just leave it on. Anymore in the future. Leave it on. Okay. Before I start sewing those, I'm going to really quickly... Cause I'm doing like two different things at the same time. I'm going to cut my dog ears off of all of these real quick while I'm doing two different things at the same time. I needed to make um, two more blocks for the, these stars. So I'm making two more blocks to give me a total of eight of these um, way. And then I'm going to do something with all these flying geese and um, some solid squares and mixture of stuff. I'm just gonna play around with fabric and make more blocks. That way I can just turn this quilt and make it an easy make by making it into tons of blocks. That way it's easier to put it together instead of trying to hook a ton of rows of two inch squares together because that would be a lot harder. I'm just like doing a bazillion things at once. pretty sure that's what you guys do too. We just kind of do something and we have to finish something else and start something else and finish something else. <laughs> just make your way around all the steps of things that you're trying to do. And having fun with it. That's all that matters. And little by little, I will get this done, whether I work on it only on the videos or on the side, which I kind of did today. And I'll just do all of my sewing. So even my little scraps that I'm sewing together, I'll sew those that way they can get put aside. And that way um, nothing gets misplaced or put in a pile separately and then I won't know what goes with what. Because again, I'm going to make a second project off of the scraps from these scraps, which is quite fun. How many of you make projects from scraps and then the scraps from the scraps make another project? It's a lot of scraps. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if there's actual scraps though from the scraps, like the scraps that I get from this. There's not going to be a lot, so it's not going to make that big of a thing because they're little. Jill has a question. She says, uh, have you ever incorporated more fabrics other than the original scraps? What do you mean? No, I don't think so. All right, those go with that. She's saying pretty much do you mix all your scraps together, which yes, you do. Oh, yes. I mix a lot of scraps together, yes. I'm pretty sure that's what she's getting at. All right, I'm going to sew from one side to the other, but on top of my three and a half inch by two inch, I'm going to lay it on top and just sew from the top corner down to the bottom corner, and I'm going to chain piece all of them through. Susan says I make crumb blocks. Is that what you meant? Scraps and scraps? Yes. Would that be a crumb block? Yep. So Susan does it. So I'm just aiming for the corner. You guys can draw your line, but. Oh, she means in this quilt. In this quilt, have you incorporated more fabrics with the I think there is only, giving? I think these were all given to me, but there is one fabric that doesn't look like it goes with any of it. And they were big half square triangles at first, but then I turned them into hourglass blocks. So now I have a stack. And they look fine with it because of the pink color. So 
I'm going to incorporate all these because now I have another stack of hourglasses. So now I have two stacks of um, different hourglass colorways. Laura says she sometimes uses yardage on a scrap book for borders. Even though it's working with tiny pieces and a lot of people don't like to work with the tiny pieces, I find it relaxing. And then, I mean, these aren't really too small. The blocks come out almost six and a half inches when they're made. So, I can't say that it's too small of a piece to work with. Just have to watch it, that's all. It's fun though. I definitely enjoy making smaller projects. And I also enjoy having a full bobbin. That would be helpful. It does not look like I have any white, so I need to roll real quick. There it is. I'll empty this one of this thread so that I put white on it. Wasn't that cool? I don't want to just roll one bobbin because I don't know how much sewing I will get done today. So more than one is fine to roll. I should think of this before doing videos, or at least look at my stack of bobbins. And see what color I need to roll. says your hair is getting long it looks nice it's a mess that's what it is i'm so so annoyed of this dumb curl thing that keeps my hair as straight as straight gets normally but for some reason when it's short it curls at the bottom super weird with curly hair. It's fine with wavy when my hair is long, like a cute little like curl but combed out. But curly hair on me? Mm -mm -mm. This does not look right. <laughs> I look weird. All right, what was I doing? Threading now. I guess it's because all the years I just had long hair that I've always stared at myself with long, straight, flat, no bounce hair and all of a sudden now i have weirdness going on all right let's go to where i ended off be nice when you realize when you're out of thread sure will ask what you're making tip I'm still working on um, my scraps project that I've been working on for the last three so Sundays. Okay, two more. And then I will have four of each, which is what I want. I'm not making an equal amount of blocks on all the different blocks. Because I'm probably going to just put this project together all willy-nilly, but oh, really? I'm having fun with it. That's all that matters. 
Plus, I only have so much fabric. All right, now I'm going to cut away the excess. Jill says, we usually like the opposite of hair that we have. I have thick wavy hair that I wish was straight. Thank goodness for product. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to trim a quarter inch away. And all these little pieces are going to be turned into little hourglass blocks. Quilty Grandma asks, do you know how big the quilt will be? No. I have no idea, only because I'm just kind of making things up as I go. But I'm going to assume, just by the fact that I've made quilts with six inch blocks like this, and I've made as many as I possibly could, um, that it'll probably be small, like a baby size. Crystal says, I love your creativity. Thank you. And then while Scott is pressing these for me to add my other side, I'll sew all these um, Ooh, I can iron some more. groupings together. Andy says, I just turned a bunch of triangles like that into one and three quarter inch pinwheels. That's cool. <clears throat> All right, so all the whites need to be pressed back like that nicely. And I'm going to take and run all these little sets together through the machine. Sherilyn says when my hair is short, I look like a cute cat. <laughs> that was funny. I had to redo that one. Uh, so I'm going to go in with the point up first, with the white fabric up first to make my little hourglass, and I'm going to flip the opposite one upside down and put in the square part in second. That way they're already together in sets of two, and all I have to do is sew those sets of two together. And I just flip one, sew one in at the point, and flip one. That's all I do to make little hourglasses with these little tiny pieces. And they're not all the same size, unfortunately, so that's why I'm making them for my smaller stack. I could use them to put together for this bigger project, but I don't think it's going to work out that way because then they would be, it would look weird. I mean, not too weird, but. Bill asks, have you seen the quilt that Jean True Love recently made? These scraps that you're putting together reminds me of her so long. I didn't, you know, I usually watch a lot of YouTube, but I watch so many quilters channels that I am behind. Like I am trying to catch up on everybody's stuff. So I probably did miss it. I did see like a week ago or a couple days ago that there was a post that she was free motion quilting. So I'm not sure what that was and I didn't watch it yet so every two I snip apart for these because my scraps get sewn together and all I do is spring or press them to the dark and then run them through that simple and then these will go in my other little pile that way I don't have to worry about them later or them getting out of order or anything. Well, there's only a couple of them anyway, so it's okay. Angela says they're too tiny. Yes, they are. Yep, they're under two inches. It's the only reason why I wasn't able to use them. Oh, it's only tiny. I think they'll square up to one and a half inch squares nicely. Oh, come on. Sometimes these little guys 
they're really easy to line up but it's it takes a second to get them to line up because they're so small but they are small enough they're easily finger pressed so i don't have to do any ironing i'm just gonna throw them over in the pile that way they're done and i'll deal with them later asked how big do you think the book would be she missed that answer she was not going. very big probably baby size she just got here and when i say baby size i'm saying like anywhere from 30 inches to 30 you know like 30 whatever by 40 whatever or 50 somewhere around there you know it's not gonna be that big no angelo that's him he's right there you can see him He's in the camera just a little bit. There he is. Oh, There's his profile. <laughs> so here. She asked just... if we replaced him. Nope, that's him. Nope. So here's my tiny little hourglass. So I have a few of them. I'll worry about them later, but this is what they look like. They're tiny. They're so small, this is why I can't add them, but they're going to get trimmed to about one and a half inches. So I'll deal with those later. For now, I'm going to sew the opposite side now to my flying geese pieces. So I'm going to take my whites and turn my whole block upside down, grab a white, and I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to add it to the opposite side, and I'm going to sew from this corner down to this, from here to here. Or technically, I'm sewing from here to here, because that's the way I'm lined up. And if anything, I'm sewing like slightly to the um, inside. So that way when they flip, they flip nicely and stay two inches. I try to do like a stitch or a hair or whatever over towards that way, but it's kind of hard because the needle is a, um, a ball point. So it never even ends in the corner, no matter what you do. And if you have a uh, if you have a, a machine that's not a straight stitch and has that bigger hole, just load the flatter side in first before you go in, because these corners get sucked down into your machine. Scrunchies asks, what are the dimensions of your flying geese blocks? They are three and a half inch by two inch um, pieces. With two inch squares on top, so that way when they're folded out, I'll have a little tiny quarter inch seam. And Heather tip. asks, oh, I'm sorry, can I interrupt you? No. Heather asks, uh, what size stitch length do you use when sewing such tiny blocks? Uh, two. Yeah, it's at two. Sometimes smaller. Sometimes I'll put like 1.8 or 1.6. I still want to be able to pick stitches if I have to, so I don't want it to be like the tightest stitch ever, but I don't want them to come apart. Since it is small, the less stitches in it, the harder it's going to be to keep it together. So you do want a tighter stitch length because the pieces are so small. Because if you're only sewing 10 stitches per inch and your block is 2 inches, that's only 20 stitches across the thing. That's it. To hold it together. So. I would say a tighter stitch length is better so that it stays together. And the last one, and then I'll trim the excess away. Again, while Scott's ironing them, I will turn the little pieces into um, quarter square triangles. 
because I'm doing my scrap work at the same time as my whole work. sewed them knots together. There we go. And just trim away a quarter inch seam. And Scott can press them while I sew. And then I will continue to make the other blocks after this. And then I will create a block out of these. Make sure when you cut your um, flying geese units that you cut the correct side because I've accidentally cut the wrong side before. I'm not going to purposely do it to show you, but I've accidentally cut on this side of the line instead of that side before because I was distracted. So it's not very good when you do that because then you really have to start over because you can't fix that. All right, and while he irons those, I'm just going to sew these little fellers together. Little fellers, now you're talking like me. Little fellers. They're so cute and so tiny. Oh, there's one. Everybody's having a good weekend this weekend. I've been outside a few times to enjoy the heat <laughs> because I love the heat. Enjoy the heat. Yes, I enjoy the nope, heat. Nah, I don't really enjoy enjoy it after a certain degree, but I definitely don't like it when it's under a certain degree either. The heat makes me feel great. Sunbathing keeps my body uh, working properly. So gotta get my daily sun. My body burns as soon as the sun gets in. going on in the comments. Talking about dogs, talking about sewing stuff, talking to each other, talking about medical stuff. Everybody's having an everybody conversation. Well, there's 130 people on yeah. Ooh, there's 130 of you. Yeah. Don't forget your thumbs up. One, 129. Yeah, that's 20. That's, oh, no, it's 130. Okay, the changes. Up and down my screen. And don't forget if you're new to subscribe because that really helps me. You can ask anything you like, Kathleen. Kathleen wants to know what is the blue thing that looks like a Ferris wheel? 
That is a binding wheel. Oh, yeah, the binding wheel. Pull it's a binding wheel. Them. So when you're making your binding, you hook this to your ironing board. We're going to pretend this is my ironing board. You hook that on there, screw it underneath the ironing board, and you run your binding folded already pressed and folded in half under here through the little slot. And that way, while you're binding, you just iron, roll up, iron, roll up, iron, roll up. And then it stays rolled. But this thing only fits the amount of a queen size quilt on it. It does not fit binding for anything bigger than a queen. It starts to uh, flow out and over it. <laughs> so just know that more than eight strips doesn't fit on there very well. And I usually hook it right here on the side and then I just have my binding continuously feeding up to me from a wheel. It's kind of cool. That was an awesome gift from her good friend, so Becca. Yep, Becca gave it to me. It's magic. It keeps it off the floor and it keeps my cat from playing with it because he really loves to play with my binding. <laughs> if he comes in here and I'm making binding, he will just grab at it, bite at it, yank at it, drag it across the room. So, yeah, I, I try to, you know. That's like the perfect thing to keep it up off of the floor from him playing with it as if it was some kind of string. Angel says that's awesome. I use a paper towel too to hold my binding. That's a good idea. I, I have a, um, it's over there. I have like a, it wasn't a toilet paper roll. It was a roll from something else because it's really, really hard and it's really skinny. I have that for rolling stuff up. All right, so here's and some says more. She so enjoyed watching you sew that red quilt. Some more hourglasses. Right here. Oh, that hasn't shipped off. That's going to ship off tomorrow, tomorrow. So I can actually show that to you guys. If you guys want to see what it looks like finished, if you don't use Instagram or Facebook, because I haven't posted it on there yet, but I usually post the projects oh. after they go to their owner. We'll but I can actually show you guys what it looks like. Let me put these blocks together, and then in a little bit, I'll show you the quilt. Jeanette also says she bought one of those cutters you used to cut the chain piecing. Oh, this thing? Yeah. The cutting gizmo? Yes, yep, this works. Does. I'm not using it today, go figure, because I, I have these little singer snips my daughter gave me. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to hold them. Maybe your pinky goes in it. I'm not sure, but whatever way you hold them, they're convenient. <laughs> Which right. daughter got you that? I don't remember Alexa. those. Really? I don't remember that. Yeah, that and the bunch of those little custom rulers, which I don't even know where I put them. Huh. The little specialty rulers. Let me throw together some stars real quick because I needed one more set of stars for my... Um, blocks for my thingy-mabobber. I can't even think of the word. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. For my project. That's what I was saying. One, two, three, and four. Let's scoot it over just a little. Alright, put another one together. That way I'll have two of a few colors of these blocks, which looks really cool. Yes, Crystal, you can ask anything you'd like. We will answer to the best of our knowledge. Well, Tiff will. I don't have very much knowledge. So she will answer to the best of her knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me put these two blocks together. You see, I'm just kind of moving through everything and i'm not confusing myself because guess what it's all scrap and i'm kind of building it all as i go and just making things up as i go at the same time so i'm definitely uh multitasking on the same project which is kind of cool I'm totally just going to chain piece the next 
one all the way through as well. <laughs> so I could do both blocks at the same time. Yes, Teresa, I see your comments. Why did you have a question? Maybe nobody saw anything and she thinks that nobody can see her comments or like she I said don't know. something to someone. So far, she's just saying hi to people and oh. talking to Kathy. And... Kathy's quilts. So now I'm just going to right, left, right, left, right, left with my finger pressing and it actually wouldn't matter which block I like start doing because they're all um they're both exactly the same so I'm on the like exactly the same row kind of thing so I'm just finger pressing the whole long row of it Melina says, I'm glad you're here on Sunday not many new videos or lives on Sunday and I like to listen while I sew Good. Yes, I like, I started the whole Sunday thing because it was the only day that everybody seemed to be able to catch me at this, at the time that I do, at the time frame that I'm on, everybody got to watch because most people were saying they were missing all my videos a long time ago. So yeah, I chose Sunday at 5 p.m. so that everybody on all coasts and other sides of the country and so on and so forth can see the video. It's morning time for other countries, but still. It was the time where everybody can catch me. While live instead of a replay. It was a perfect time slot. Although I do come on at the same time as Sarah Lawson, so sweetness. But, um, next when the time changes, she'll be on uh, a different time as me. And I watch her videos after the fact. I used to watch the lives, but now that I'm on at the same time and have been for the last couple of years, now I just watch her replays. Okay, I think Crystal got her question out here. It took her more than one comment, but it's, I'm working on uh, with eight and a half inch squares and two and a half inch sashing. Sashing on all sides of the square. What size is that supposed to be? 12 this... and three quarters is what she's asking. I don't know the math. She's got an eight and a half inch block with a one and a half inch sashing. Two on and a half all... inch. Oh, two and a half inch on all four sides? And yeah, it's a 12 and a half inch block. So you can see I'm like chain piecing the whole thing together or web piecing or whatever you guys want to call it. Nothing gets out of place. It's all hooked together. I will have to separate the two separate blocks though. block one of what I'm doing. So there's my star. It's all hooked together and I can't get nothing out of order. Works out perfect. I do that quite often if you guys have ever paid attention to how I put stuff together. I chain piece everything or I web piece everything. Um broke and cheap so i don't like buying threads so if i could save like you know five inches of thread per every whatever i'd rather do that it's 
Not much, but it accounts to something in the end. Because I go through a lot of thread. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to hook these two together, the other two together, then the four into one. So, so simple, so quick. And then I'll pass it off to Scott to press. Mush it out of the way. And I got the hiccups. Happens every time. Kathy asks, are you ever going to do any more of your insomniac videos? Uh, that depends. Crystal said thank you, so I guess you answered her question. Pretty sure that is. I'm, I'm horrible Crystal, if you're still math. confused, you can, you can send her an email or message her or something later. Um, today I'm going to be doing Zoom with uh, T and everybody. Well, she can so. message you tonight and she you can answer tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. She can send her phone number. You can even call her another day. It doesn't have to be tonight. All right. So here's one star block for Scott to make nice and flat with the iron. See. Oh, that's awesome looking. And now let's put number two together, and then we're going to work with the uh, flying geese unit. Does it and matter I... which way the back is Huh? Which way? No, just leave them the way they, I finger press. Okay, that's what I was going to do. happens. I, I, I have no idea what I'm honestly making here besides a mess. A very colorful mess. <laughs> Making sure my seams nest because everything has been finger pressed at this point. But it all lines right up nicely. And here's another block for you to press. So here's my beautiful another star. Now I have stars of many colors. I have today today because I did this earlier <laughs> and then last week I did this one and then another blue because I'm making two of each and then a yellow and another yellow so I used the darker colors so that it had some contrast all right so now let's work with the flying geese so here's all my flying geese and we're gonna use and says your messes turn out so pretty <laughs> Um, -da 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 -da. Quilty Graham says, I want... love your fly by the seat, fly by the seat of your pants creations. They always come out awesome. <laughs> I like that. Green. Fly by the seat. I want some of this. And I want this purple. So what I'm going to do... So here's my other star. I'm going to take totally different colors. Here's that one, that one, that one, this purple, and I need another color that I didn't put in here, which is this. Oh, I already grabbed a piece of that. I need the pink. There we go. I am going to cut off. Three, three, that's three and a half. We want. Hold on, I gotta think real quick. Two, 
an inch by I just want two inch so I don't care that there's gonna be a little waste from my other project So I'm going to cut a two inch strip off of each of these. Actually, no, I'm going to cut two because I need um, four pieces. And these will just go with my scraps. Yep, I can do that for you, Dana. What? If you want to close up. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So there's one, two. Let's cut two more. How's that look? I think they look pretty cool. Let's straighten that side up. Cut two inches off. All right, so there's four. And those are just going with my scraps. So I got four of this one. I'm going to cut four two inch squares off of this. Everybody's saying nice and pretty and looking good. Actually, I'm just going to do this. Very okay. colorful and pretty. I'll get four this way. We're just going to cut a two inch strip off of this at the fold. And the last piece is about an inch. So it can go with my string pieces. Just going to straighten this up. Uh, memoirs asks, so T will have Zoom tonight? I think it's tonight. I don't know, is Eric on to ask him? Not that I've seen, but that oh, doesn't mean he's not in here. Pretty sure it was tonight. All right, so I'm cutting two inch squares off of this. I only need four, so I'm just going to make two cuts because it's folded in half. And then this can go with my scraps. So there's four of those. I'm going to do it again with this blue. Such a vibrant blue. Heather says it looks great. Zella says love it. Really like scrap quilts. Quilt so do I. Gorgeous. And this is a controlled scrap quilt because these are all scraps from the same quilts, just not my quilt. These are scraps from Bernie. So I'm going to make two cuts off of here now. Linda says, you have such a good sense of color choice. I didn't choose the color. This is a fabric line. Um, Bernie, if she's here, I saw her name earlier, can put the name of the fabric line because I forgot already. Yep, yeah, Bernie's here. She knew. She knows it every time. I'm not one, I don't know if you, those, those that are, are new to my channel might not know this. I am not designer friendly. I don't know the names of designer fabrics. I don't know the line, the names of these fabric lines. I don't know any of it. I just know that I like to cut fabric and sew it back together again. That's what I know. <laughs> and I have fun doing it. I do know that it's floral something from Markova. Yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> One, two. And we're going to stack it all up and cut two inch slip cut squares. And you can see some of these scraps I cannot use because that's a half an inch and I'm not going to try to sew half an inch. I may be crazy, but I'm not that crazy. All right. And then, says you, you do a very nice job at it. <laughs> I think can I get four off of here. Probably. Let's see. One. Two. And nope. I'm just going to cut another two inch strip because I know that I'll use more later for 
something else. I'm just going to go ahead and cut one two inch square off of here and set that aside. I know that that's two inches though, so I'll put it right there. All right. There's all that. Now I need center. I'm thinking here I'm Star points are white, so. Susan says she's the same way. She likes the color and design on the fabric. She finds it hard to pass by. No. I need one, two, three, four, five. There's supposed to be six colors. Did we right? miss one? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. I need to cut one more color for my things. And I don't think I made one. No, I did make one with that. Did I make it with this? No, I did not. Let's do this one. And that'll give me See, I'll save the cut off of this one because that's more than an inch. But it's not an inch and a half, so I can just cut it down to little inch squares. All right, there. Now I have six. Four sets. I mean, six sets of four. And then I want to take... I think I'm just going to use the white. I'm going to take this piece of white that I had, you know, that I cut those two inch squares from to start with. Move all this out of my way. And I'm going to cut three and a half inch squares from it. So I need this. So we're going to cut one, two, three and a half. So I'm just going to cut a couple, one, six, three and a half inch strips. I mean, six three and a half inch squares. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three and a half. I'm just going to cut three off of this. Put that up there. Turn these and subcut into three and a half inch squares. I'm kind of sticking with the star theme, if you guys are not catching on. <laughs> For those of you that know the, the whole makings of a block beforehand when you use flying geese, yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys have caught on to the one, two, three and a half, three and a half. Billy says you have such a creative one, brain. And Two. I'm going to toss that out of the way. So now I have six of these white three and a half inch squares by three and a half inch. And I'm going to take now my reds. I'm going to find my other red. One. And two. We're going to put the star points in. And then we're going to just use. Hello, everyone. I'm meowing in the other room because I must want attention. So here I am to say hi. Red and orange with the orange, and then I'm going to take an oddball color, which will do purple on this one. We'll put it in all four corners, and then I will have me a star block. And I'm going to do that with every single one of these. So I know this seems very, very weird. My butt is going numb. Oh. <laughs> Must move legs. Hmm. Did you guys' butts go numb? Because mine sure does. 
right at the tip of my butt cheeks at the bottom, at the top of the you leg. you need to stand up and do some ironing or something? No. All right. What I'm going to do is next I'm going to put, we're going to make sure that all these are dot side up. Dot side up. Dot side up. I wasn't paying attention when I uh, cut them. I'm totally going to stack these and then chain piece the whole lot of them together. If you guys have ever seen me do this, I do it quite often. So my next star will be this color orange. Rhonda says, just made my first flying geese. Not fun yet. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to use with that one, we're going to do this blue. Because I'm mixing them up. Now we're going to take the green, putting my whites in towards the center, creating a star like this, because I don't want anything mixed up. And with this green, we're going to put this bright orange. Like that. And then we're going to use this dark blue. Put that up there. And this dark blue is going to get this pretty pink. And then we're going to do the light blue. And that one will get the dark green. And then my pinkish reddish color We'll get the light green like that. So cool. Now sewn together. Bring it nice and close to me like that. And I'm going to start by sewing these two. Quarter inch seam. I'm going to sew the next ones. Take the next two. The next two. And so on and so forth until they are all together. And then I to make a star sample just to see a pretty star and make a square. All right, now I'm going to just leave it here and I'm going to be finger pressing towards the outside, which is my little square, and now I'm going to just connect its opposite ends. So again, I'm just going to finger press it out. My next one should be the green to match my other green. And so on and so forth until they are all sewn on. Totally keeps me in order as well as I don't waste a ton of thread. But mainly it keeps me in order. Kim has a book called Simply Stars. She loves it. it, has so many different ways to make them. You got awesome. a lot of books over here. You might have one on them. All right, so now I'm just going to finger press all of these outward. And to keep everything in order, this bottom one goes first because that's what I sewed. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And there we go, they're back in order. 
So now I'm going to hook this to this side and this to this side. So I could just pick up the whole pile, make it easier, and just stick it next to me. Chain piece all these through, right sides together, quarter inch seam. Mel stress, how big is your square? The center square or the whole square? I'm together. not sure. Should come out six and a half inches. The flying geese are three and a half by two inch rectangles with two inch squares attached to them. Then the center square is a three and a half inch by three and a half inch square. And then the outer squares are two inch squares. And that will come, it should come out that exact size of that. They're six and um, three eighths. Yep. Six and three eighths is the total. The inner one is right at three inches. The little one is an inch and a half. Yep, you was right. All right, now I'm going to just leave them all hooked together and add my other side. These are just going to go finger pressed in towards my center square. I'm just going to pick these up and oops, attach these on here. And I should have plenty of room with my flying geese to not lose the point on any of my pieces. Or at least I'm trying not to. Sometimes I do. And it don't matter because, again, this is just a scrapbook. There's a good question. How long have you been quilting? Almost six years. Not very long. It's a very short period of time for someone who looks like I've been quilting for 20 plus years. You do a lot of it, though. Yeah. It is your hobby. You keep yourself busy. Yeah. I definitely enjoy coming in here. It helps with my MS. It helps with my other medical problems. It keeps me sane. Disconnect them, and this is going to go on the bottom because this was the bottom color. So on and so forth, because they they're in order. So still, nothing got messed around. Paula has a question. Can someone tell me how to figure out how much yardage to get for a quilt top? It depends on what size quilt top you want to make, and what pattern you're using, and well, anything. That's a loaded question because <laughs> there's lots of variables. They do have a book. It's called Three Yard Quilts. Um, actually, it's more than one book for it. I forgot the name of the writer. Some of you that are out there know who does the three yard quilts. Um, but she designed it to where you just need three yards, one yard of three different colors or three different prints or three different solids or whatever. And you can make three yard quilts. They are lap size usually what they turn out to be and they're definitely cute and easy to make very easy to do podunk says there's a website called quilters paradise and they have a backing calculator i use the robert kaufman backing is that what the question was was how much backing is used no or she's just how much the fabric top. period yeah it all depends on what size i mean i made a, a baby quilt once and i bought like a yard of 12 different 12 different colors that's 12 yards of fabric for a baby quilt i didn't use all of it for the baby quilt but i needed 12 different colors and i bought a yard of each and i made a scrap out of it you know a scrap quilt. donna robertson has the three yard quilt donna rob okay yeah thank you so if you want to make just a lap size quilt if it's your first quilt I have videos easy with like layer cakes and pre-cuts, then there's those three yard quilt books, or shoot, you can get a home gar home and garden, I think it is, book that has quilt patterns in it. I'm just going to finger press these all real quick towards Kim says, now if you could just get back to the Insomniac series. You guys all really love that, for all of you late-nighters. Wait, all of you were late-nighters, not just one or two of you. 
It's like every single one of us. Ergie says, what pattern do you have? What pattern do I have for what? The patterns that I wrote, there's quite a few. There's an actual playlist that are patterns that I wrote, and I think two or three are missing from the pattern playlist because I have over 400 videos, so I, it's hard to find <laughs> the right one that goes with the right one. Paula asks, did you sew children's clothes before you started quilting? No. I've tried to sew children's clothes. I that came clothing. after the quilting. Yeah, that came way after. And she did good on one or two of them. I did make clothing clothing at first, but I did not know what I was doing. And I made myself a, uh, what is it called? A jumper, a one, a one piece jumper strapless. And it fits, but it doesn't look all that great. And then I made myself um, a dress. Actually, I made a few dresses now. Um, I've made lots of kids' pants and dresses and tank top, uh, top things that are tank tops. You've tried underwear. Um, I've tried, tried to make bottoms. underwear, my own underwear. I was like, I'm tired of buying underwear. I have tons of fabric. I'll make my own. Yeah, right. <laughs> Made people say you can take and sweats and people hair. say you can take your own clothing and use it as a pattern for something else. So I took a pair of my underwear and I took them apart and I took them when I was in the garage because it's when I used to just you know play around in the garage with all this stuff. And I took a pair of underwear, took it all apart and used that as the thing to make underwear and uh-uh. Mm -mm. Nope, it does not work that way. <laughs> all right, now and turn all this to the side and hook all these onto this and then so on and so forth. I'm going to start with this side like this and then we'll hook the other side. And it's just finger pressed for now, but I'm just going to do hook one side and then keep it all together and hook the other sides on. Rhonda asks, if you run up on a fabric you want to stash, what yardage would you buy? If I found a fabric that I want to stash and keep? Yeah. Um, five yards. <laughs> Depends on how much it costs. <laughs> it depends on how much it costs, but uh, if I like something and it's at the store and it's on sale, I buy whatever's left on the bolt. Yeah, if it's on sale, she'll buy the whole thing. If it's not on sale, then she'll only buy a few yards. Yeah. And if I really, really like it, uh, I get as much as I possibly can of it, but I guess if it was to like just be something to have as uh, for like, you know, on my shelves for border fabric, two yards. <laughs> That's a feasible amount, especially if it's, you know, $10 or more a yard. <laughs> then I definitely only buy two yards. These squares are going to allow me to play with the quilting when I finally do quilt. <laughs> I've told her that too, Virgie. Virgie says go commando. <laughs> I've said that. Yeah, I can't do that. We won't go down that road, but yep, <laughs> that was a funny nope. one. Not happen for me. My next clothing, actually, where did it go? Right here. I bought some uh, fleece when I bought my, um, that last big huge haul. I bought some fleece. I bought two yards of it. I'm going to make these so easy pajama pants by Cindy Taylor Oates with fleece. Because they look comfy. Don't those look comfy? I'm pretty sure they're made with quilting cotton, but I'm still going to make the pajama pants because they just look comfy. And I'm not sure if the pillowcases are in the, the pattern is in here too, because, oh, it is. This is bonus pillowcase, tote bag, and bracelet. So I can make a tote bag too. Woohoo. Yeah. So I got this book so that I can actually try to remember. I've made pants before, but I kind of don't remember how I made them. <laughs> I know I shoved the leg into another leg and then sewed the seam. I totally forgot how I did that. <laughs> so I'm going to use the book to do it. Make myself some pajama pants. Because winter is coming. 
And I can't get cold. Don't let me get cold. I have to stay warm. I need all the fleece pajama pants I could possibly have. <laughs> Our winter only gets cold to you. Or to anyone else. <laughs> yeah. The winters are awesome. Our summers that... Anything be below wearing. 70 and you guys will see me wearing pants. <laughs> Fleece pajama pants at that. I do not do cold. All right, I'm going to keep all these connected and I'm just going to pick up this pile like this. I'm going to turn it around for one and I'm going to flip it upside down for two because I'm going from the bottom up. Oh, well, then I didn't have to do that. I just laid them that way. There we go. All right. I'm going to hook them on now. I should have my whites pointing towards the white. I just had to flip it upside down. That's all. I'm not really, like, totally focusing on my um, star points either. Like, the little points. If they land nicely, then they land nicely. I could care less. Camilla says, I love your hair like that, Tiffany. <laughs> Thank you. There's my, my answer. Thank you. <laughs> I don't like it. I hate my hair like this. I can't wait till it's long again. Nothing against short hair. It's just my hair short. <laughs> Does not make no sense. It's just fluffy. I don't like fluffy hair. <laughs> Scott actually has a picture of me with curly, 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 curly hair. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and it's not very flattering at all on me. <laughs> I've also had a perm before, not once, but twice, and I didn't like that either. Well, that's when you had the curly, curly hair that I had the picture. That was one of your perms. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that what the picture's from? Yeah. Okay, two more, and then I can separate them. I think it was something you just wanted to try for the heck of it or whatever, because I like the straight hair. I told you not to, but you wanted to try it. And he thought it was the funniest thing. Yep, I got a whole bunch of pictures. Yeah, so I made tons of funny faces in all those bunches of pictures. Because <laughs> that's what I felt like. My hair and everything looked all funky, so I felt like a funky picture. <laughs> Okay, so I have now made six blocks by chain piecing the whole lot of them together. All right. The iron has to turn itself back on and, and Iron Man just walked away. So let the iron turn back on and... What time is it? I mean, how long have I been 18. on? 6.18. Yeah, now we're in 18 minutes. Okay. I'm probably going to get off of here soon. Mm. You're only saying that because you know what I'm doing. <laughs> He's trying to find the picture to show you guys so of I'm, what I look like with a perm. I'm not doing it either. I can't find it. I have he no can't find the picture. That. Not in this <laughs> Maybe phone. that's a good thing. Not on this phone. I can't find it at all. I'm waiting for the iron to heat back up. I guess while that's happening, I can just toss these in my scrap bin. All right. Oh, look. I still have points, mostly. <laughs> well, do you undo my iron to do yours? No, I'm using sweet. See? Can't you tell? Yep, now I can. Okay. One star. So simple to do these ones. Very easy. You can do that with anything. Is it back when we lived in the other house? Some of these pictures are in order by date, and then some are just random. 
Star number two. I think they look really cool because this is scrappy to have all these colors being spread out like this. Voila! Did you hold it where they can even see it? Yes. Oh. I just yeah. chose that one. I didn't choose a bad one. You can hold it up a little bit longer so they can see better. Yep. Same exact size. Look at that. Woohoo! Mm. Mm. That's what I look like with a perm, guys. That's the one I like because of the smile. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I think they're liking it. The next one. <whistles> they're saying, oh my goodness, and <laughs> OMG, and there's that one. You got cute. My hair was long too, and that perm shrunk my hair up to the shortest, funkiest hairdo ever. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom says adorbs. Memoir says you look gorgeous. Yeah, I will never, ever, 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 ever perm my hair again. <laughs> and the last one. So there are six awesome blocks. Look at that. You could just build a quilt like this. That would look cool. I like that. So there's those. Well, anyway, they all love your star blocks, too. Yeah. Because you're getting beautiful blocks. I'm hoping they can like see it. really good. So mixed with these, it's going to look so awesome. I don't know how I'm going to lay this out, but obviously, hold on, just give you a general idea of what I'm doing here. Just... Shelly says you look so young with the perm. Well, that was about eight years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it's so getting I'm close to nine years ago. Definitely going to just mess around with all this, you know, just have fun. And obviously they, there's... You know, I probably need to make maybe two more so that there is eight and eight of each, but I'm also going to be making a ton of other blocks. So the whole quilt will be a mismatch disaster like this. And, you know, it might even have blocks that separate them all by putting, you know, actually these aren't the right size right now, but say one of these and... Let me go down in here and reach. I could like separate all the blocks by putting other blocks in between the blocks, you know, because I did make strips like this and then I did make hourglasses and four patches and so on and so forth. So, and I'm still going to make more, but here's my bag of, I still have half square triangles and everything. I could start making other blocks with all this, like a churn dash style block. Molly says, I like your blocks. You have an eye yeah. for color. Carrie says, great stars. Yeah, so that's a general idea of where I'm going here. I'm just making stuff. Heather says, love your blocks. Jill says, Tiffany, what made you stop wearing your piercings? You haven't worn them in quite some time. Um, To be honest, I just grew out of it. Uh, it seems so weird. I keep going... I go to the hospital a lot. Once a year, I have an MRI on my brain because I have MS. So once a year, always, you know, and this is, does not include in between, you know, tests, but once a year, I had to take all my jewelry out to have an MRI because you're not allowed to have them in during MRIs. So not only was once a year, I removing all of my piercings and I had way more than you guys saw when you first started seeing me all the time. Um, I was taking them all out, taking them all out. And then every time I'd put everything back in, I'd one less, one less piercing off my body somewhere. I've had lots of piercings. I just kept taking them out and taking them out. 
and I'd put one lesson every time. And then I'd have another scan of something. So I'd have to take them all out. And then two weeks would go by without having them in. I'm like, it was kind of refreshing to not have any jewelry. And then, I don't know, just last year I had so many scans with Valley Fever. And it just more and more and more and more and more scans over and over. I kept having to take it all out. And I just said, screw it. I'm not putting it all back in. So I've left it out. And I'm, I'm 40. I think I've outgrown it. I haven't outgrown tattoos. I would totally love to go get more tattoos, but I think I've outgrown the piercing stage of my life. I mean, that started real young. I was, I wasn't even 10 before I had five in each ear because my mom said it was okay. You know? So I don't know. I just outgrown it. I'm over it. <laughs> so that's why they're not there anymore. And then Angela asked, can you tell us again, what size are the pieces for the star block? For this one? Yep. I think she went to all the okay things. two inch squares on the outside so two inch by two inch square on the outside three and a half inch square on the inside by three and a half inch the flying geese units are made with a three and a half inch by two inch um rectangle and then two inch squares added on to it and then sewn on the diagonal and then trimmed away so they're three and a half inch by two inch um flying geese units. So all together, it creates a block that's the same as this, because this is two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch put together to create a six and three quarter inch block. So that way, all the things that I'm making are exactly the same. So the only thing that I'm making that is different is these flying geese blocks. Those would be the only thing that's not a two inch anything, because those are different. But that's how I just did that one. Thank you, Mary and Gia. So if you guys want to make just a simple star like this out of scraps, so very easy again, two inch by two inch square, two inch by three and a half inch uh, rectangle or flying geese unit, two inch square, same with the flying geese. And then the center is three and a half by three and a half. Very simple. And it's definitely, definitely a, uh, noticeable and if I would have did it opposite it would have white on the outside and then a bright star on the inside so there we go Mary and fun, Gia fun, both fun. said you are pretty just the way you are that was very nice thank you and Mary asks how is the valley fever by now uh it's there for the rest of my life it will never get better and the nodule has not shrunk it's the same size and it the only thing that it's done is it's calcified over so it's a three millimeter mass or three centimeter mass. Sorry. So it's like this big. And the only thing that used to have a, um, like a, what is it called? A pus pocket or whatever inside the middle of it. And that could have popped at any time and I would have drowned in my own lung. But now over time with the Valley fever medicine and everything that I went through for the last, you know, over the last year, um, it is crystallized. It's hardened. So now it's just a big chunk of nastiness stuck well, in my lung for you're life. You're fine now. But you I'm fine. Have, you don't I have just to have, take the medicine. You've been off yeah. the medicine for I've been months. off the medicine for Great. probably like seven months. I got off like the end of December, early January, somewhere around there. And I've been off since then. So the only thing I have left over is some fatigue. And I, I still wear myself out to the point where I end up coughing up a lung, <laughs> but I'm also a smoker. So that kind of doesn't, you know, I don't think that's ever going to go away. All right. Well, that's it. That's what I'm doing today. I'm trying to keep all my little pieces together. I still have a ton of four patches to trim. I haven't done that yet. So I still have, well, I can't say some, I have a lot of four patches to trim. So and then I still have all these pieces that are still string pieces to turn into two inch. If I have, you know, enough to where this can be two inch um, strips. So I can cut a bunch of two inch strips. I can cut a bunch, uh, or I mean two inch squares, I mean. Um, if I can cut a bunch of one and a half inch strips so that I can create more of my little pieces that look like this. Only because I'm going to add them throughout and I will figure out a block to make with all this. Which would be quite fun. And then I have um, 
a nice buildup of little scraps going on. as well as the last of all the yardage. Well, it wasn't yardage. It was just some more strips that were salvaged to salvage like this was a strip. So some of them were full length strips, um, but I've been cutting off of them to create things this whole time. So this is what I have left to work with. I'm just gonna make a bunch more Kim asked Blocks. are you going to make stars with four patch centers? I can. I can definitely. I can also make them with different colored outsides. I, I have tons of pieces I cut, so I'm just going to have fun with it. And Heather says, don't forget, I sent you a package this week. So thank you, Heather. That's okay. awful nice of you. Yeah. Very kind. He's, we do appreciate it. I got to go to the post office tomorrow. Oh, that's what I was going to show you guys. Yeah, we're okay, show before that I, quilt before we pack it up. Yeah, before I turn shift. off for the day, I'm going to show you guys the quilt that I had on the long arm that I was quilting feathers. That was a client's quilt. I'm going to show you that because um, it's finished and it's going to be going to her. And then I'll post pictures as soon as I send it in the mail. And that way you guys can get a sneak peek of what that finished like. And Jill's um, going to give your start square a try as soon as your live is over. She says it hopes it turns out as cute as yours. Yeah. CJ, can I borrow you for a second? Let me to hold up the other end? Yeah. I don't want to get any anything on it. Leave his headphones in. Cyrus! Yeah. We need you to hold up the end of this real quick. There's no binding on this, guys, because it's not my quilt. It's only been trimmed for the client, and that's it. That's top and the bottom. That. It's just real quick. We're not doing a sale video. We're just doing a quick show. Oh, nope. This is that's the top. That's the top. There this we go. is the top? Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Oops. Can you scoot over towards you, Scott? Thank you. Right there. Stop. All right. So here is the finished quilt. It's just quilted with feathers, literally from one side to the other. Back and forth. I can't see the comments because you're not reading it. Really I see it. Yeah, CJ's birthday was the 28th. The same day as T's birthday, guys, for all of you guys who celebrated T, the T quilt's birthday. Um, T is the same birthday, huh? Yep. Okay. July 28th was CJ's birthday, so he is now 16 years old. So this was my client's quilt. It is now 100% done. I'm pretty sure she's going to be binding it in red as well. Pretty much the same that's on the back. And if you guys would like to turn the whole quilt around so that they can see what the back looks like. I'm going to turn you guys around to see the back. It looks like a whole cloth quilt. It looks really awesome from the back side. I know. And if you hear like a squeaking that. sound, that's only because you guys are on a mount. Alright, so that was my client's quilt. Okay, you guys can put it down. Okay. So that was long arm quilted by me. She pieced it and stuff. I just I'll help to, you fold it then when we go pack it. I just have to fold it up nicely and, and pack it and get it off in the mail. So just know that you can mail in quilts for me to long arm quilt. No computer. That's all freehand. That's just me. And I showed you guys in the video. Me just having fun on somebody else's quilt. <laughs> anyway, anything else? Does anybody have anything else? I just thank you guys for all the gorgeous comments. <laughs> gorgeous comments. For all the great comments. That was gorgeous. <laughs> it is very beautiful quilt. Okay, so I'm going to get off of here. Thank you guys for hanging out. Hope you sewed with me, oh. or at least attempted to. Podunk asks, what do you charge to quilt? Zero, uh, two, two and a half cents per square inch. Does that make sense? Yeah, don't say you're yeah. zero point zero. Two and a half yeah. inch is what it starts at. It used to be two, set, two cents, but now it's two and a half cents. I know that seems like a weird number, two and a half cents, but um, two and a half cents per square inch. 
is what I charge up. Uh, it goes up with the more work that I put in. So just know that. And I also charge shipping. For those of you that are shipping your quilts to me, you pay for your shipping here and you pay for your shipping back. Because or else the shipping just eats out of my price and I make nothing. And I do a lot of work because I am free motion quilting everything. So that's about it. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, so far, I think that's it. All right, guys. I'm going to get off of here. Thank you for hanging out. Please like my video, subscribe if you're new, share with your quilty friends, and I'll see you guys next Sunday and or in between because we never know when we're going to see me. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Good night.